It's Alive follows the franchise formula to a T, which is at least three entries and a remake, specifically a 2000s remake. The previous entry, It's Alive 3, was intended to be direct-to-video, but was clearly too damn awesome, so it was given a limited theatrical release. I don't know what that says about this version, which was, in fact, dumped on video in 2009, after being shot in Bulgaria in 2007. Maybe they had other possible ideas, too. With this poster, it could easily be turned into a remake of Jason Takes Man Manhattan or Relentless at a moment's notice. Original series creator Larry Cohen didn't return for this, so instead, directing duties went to German director Joseph Rusnak of the 13th Floor and the Wesley Snipes movies The Contractor and The Art of War 2. But there's some good news about the writers. Maybe there's a chance that this could be on Elvira, since co-writer Paul Spusi wrote for Elvira's movie Macabre, plus the other writer, James Portales, wrote a pretty good Van Damme direct video movie called Until Death. It's also not necessarily in name only, as it does have the same characters from the original. There's Lenore, this time played by Bijou Phillips. There's Frank, who's now James Murray of The Crown. Hell, there's even a Sergeant Perkins here. And the Chris character is in it too. No word yet if he'll be pawned off to the neighbors like in the first. But the only important connection you need isn't even a connection to It's Alive. It's the Pierre Kirby connection. The film was shot by Wedego von Schulzendorf, the cinematographer for the Jet Set music video by Alphaville, which, as we all know, is the Pierre Kirby theme song. <laughs> makes this not a useless remake. Hmm. What a useless guy. Plus, it's a Metropolitan film, so we'll remake the TriStar logo while we're at it. This is the shortest of all the It's Alive movies at 82 minutes, and yet I think that most of the runtime is due to the mass amounts of production logos. It's always a good sign when there's more producers than cast members, but we'll make sure that it has a following online. Put the credits in the meme font, that'll make it hip. I see we're starting with a college course on, uh, I don't know, discussing the various themes of 2001 A Space Odyssey? I guess someone is leaving the Overlook Academy for potential housemaids. What? Nicholas Pike did the music for The Shining remake as well. Wait, never mind. We're in New Mexico, obviously. What's happening? But there'll be no more Pizza Fridays, no more late night Ben and Jerry's, no more peeing while you shower. You can come over to Frank's house and pee while I shower. I'm sorry, did I put in a remake to Happy Birthday to me instead? Here Lenore is leaving college at the end of the semester because she's pregnant. After all, college campuses are where you don't want mutant babies lurking around, lest you forget when the ghoulies went to college. It's too late, though. Horny guy is here. Whoa, nice. Don't let me stop you. If you guys want to explore more of a physical expression on your relationship, then I can wait. Mm, much like how he's exploring various accents. It says it's based on a film written and directed by Larry Cohen. It didn't say which one. There's still a chance it's Full Moon High. And I'm sure Larry loved that his script is still credited, given he went on record as telling people not to watch this one. Though after my comparison to Mac and Me for the ending of It's Alive 3, just saying, this one's kind of setting me up for another reference too. But back to decorating the new baby's room with with quotes. Every child born in this world is finer than the last. Mm, that's good and all, but I was thinking Heineken, fuck that shit, Paps Blue Ribbon. It does some things you'd expect a remake to do, understandably, if you wanted to change it up. Here it's more so Lenore who's the main character, plus she and Frank aren't married in this one, and Chris isn't their son, he's Frank's little brother. 
And there's significantly more sexy shower scenes where CGI might be the father. Whoa, giving birth already? I would say that this is fast, but actually, I think it was quicker in the original. The staff gives less of a shit, though. Okay, okay, how do you remember the first night we met? And you must have walked by my table like five times. I predict this relationship ends in three months. If you were worried that there wouldn't be an It's Alive 2 comparison, they have you covered. Can I be with her? Uh, no. No, not yet, Frank. Is there a problem? It appears the fetus has had a growth spurt since our last checkup. For instance, why is this scene dubbed? The doctor looks more like a soap opera actor they just put a stethoscope on. I'm surprised Dr. Drake Ramore isn't this character. Everything in here is ridiculously 80 yard again, but here it makes sense for the mask to be covering his face, unlike when they just had a guy put a phone over his mouth in the second. This Frank, though, doesn't have anyone to play cards with, and the babies just hang out in the waiting room. Do you mind, Frank? You're making it weird. Weirder than the birth scene. Yeah, he is big. <laughs> Seems okay. Oh yeah, congratulations. It's the possession worm from Jason Goes to Hell. I'll give it this, it doesn't go the PG-13 route. Here we get a glimpse of the baby quicker than in the original. But that makes sense in this case, since the baby starts out looking fairly normal. And best call in Perkins, who joined the force when old man Perkins went missing on a mysterious island and was never seen again. I can't lie, I'm anxiously awaiting to see if it still does the series trademark of police wildly opening fire at a moment's notice. While Frank looks like the kind of person who is holding in all of his Game of Thrones questions to Owen Teal. The killing spree makes news again here, but they don't immediately assume it was the baby. And the baby has a name this time, which is Daniel. It's like they didn't know whether to remake the unborn or it's alive, and just did both. Now remember to 2000s horror the shit out of this. Rapid fire flashbacks with white dissolves, check. But so far it's relatable. Hey. <coughs> Scratch me. That'll happen. Just wait until he headbutts you in the nose. She's already being distanced from her friends. Once the baby's born, she ditches the booze-filled holiday parties. Though if the baby is CGI, that naturally means he's one of the baby geniuses. He rolled over. They're not supposed to do that for four months. That's one of the upsides to Gerber Baby Ghost Pepper. It gets them moving real fast. Look, he's even drilling now. Oh, it's dad. Go figure, though. The baby who scratches and leaves dead rats in the backyard? Not the easiest to breastfeed. All this talk of there being characters from the original, I hope that whoever is in the vent is Lloyd making his return to the series. Ah, uh, see? There he is. Aw. They didn't get a Siamese this time? For shame. You went the Lady in the Tramp remake route. How dare you? Hell, we don't even get any advice from Frank's boss this time. You know who O'Connor's down in accounting? He's got a retarded kid. Oh, but thank God we know what the college friends are up to. <laughs> what? I wasn't being serious. Why are they still in this? They're upset Lenore is not calling them back. Gee, it's like she just had a baby or something. I'm gonna take a break, because this is gonna get repetitive. Luckily, though, I, you know, I can conceal this bad boy underneath my blanket just so I can get on E-Trade. Check my investment portfolio, research stocks. Oh, I see. Solitary. Just a man and his thoughts, and a smartphone. We're back, and much like the other one, I keep forgetting that Chris is in this. Though someone's glad to see him. I'm Chris. Chris Davis. Well, yeah. You're famous. Whoa, I didn't know you were real. You're like an urban legend. The boy who keeps getting pawned off on the neighbor. They still play with psychosis, like in the first, where here Lenore is so protective of her son, she's in total denial of the breast milk having blood in it, and naturally is leery about speaking to the police because they might handcuff the baby for mass murder. Don't worry, the psychiatrist can bring back her 2000s editing flashback. Scum. 
It was a requirement that every flashback back then looked like a Saw film. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm the mother of a newborn. I gotta get back to feeding the baby, check up on Chris on loan from Stepfather 3, and stop the baby from eating birds. No! Not Not ever, ever eat this! Your father is picking up a bucket of chicken for dinner. You can have the bones. Hey, at least Frank seems to be having a normal day, as he's incredibly oblivious in this version. I think the college friend has more scenes. Hey, it's me, again. Please, call me. I hope Lenore answers the phone so her friends can stop being in this! Lenore's mental stability does continue to go off the rails, but instead of spending the movie in a drugged-up haze, she's basically in full protection mode, and reacting as if it's nothing, she has to keep throwing away dead animals that she finds in the crib, and stupid Frank notices none of this. Hell, he's all excited for the two of them to go out to dinner and have a date night. We shouldn't, though. We don't have enough in the budget to hire an actor to play a babysitter. Some stuff is effective, like the shot of her chewed-up nipple. But the problem is that it does feel very, very edited down to 80 minutes. Whatever mental state they need the characters to be in, like Crazy Lenore, they're just in, with no build-up. The original at least had explanations, like Lenore being put on medication. Even side characters like the psychiatrist, who seem important, are just quickly killed off to where I'm confused as to why he was even in it. This is gonna take a lot longer for Lenore to clean up than the baby's deer carcasses. But she's got a great place to take the car. Head on over to Jimmy's immediately! She's got nothing else to do. They couldn't use Larry Cohen's pool this time, and this one just looks sinister. Clueless Frank doesn't know what he's in for when he gets home. She's a wine mom now! Prepare for opening night tickets to the Mafia Mama premiere and a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, hey, Chris, uh, we had no idea you were back there. Sorry about making out with your dad brother while you're in the room. They've got time to kill. Perkins is going to be stuck in the green screen room for a while, while the voice on the radio sounds more realistic than his. It sounds more realistic than the rest of the voices. I'm sorry I've been so, um... That's okay. It's been a rough couple of weeks. They say it always is with your first. They don't have half of it. <laughs> I'm going to go say goodnight to Danny boy. Why is there even more bad ADRing in this than in the second? I think all of this is dubbed. That's different than we made it so fast, so let's dub some lines in to fill in plot details. This is like it shares a universe with dancing it's on. Oh, the friends are here to find out why Lenore has missed the 12th straight kick and rager in a row. Just walk on in. I'm sure they're expecting guests. After all, it is still Christmas, despite I don't recall the dialogue ever mentioning Christmas. Regardless, Lenore seems like she's up for guests. I have a baby, so I'm kind of occupied. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard from you. And, and then we got a bill from the hospital? She's been freaking busy. Mutant baby or no mutant baby. It's a him? Yeah. Well, can I see? Shh. No. And please, continue to be louder. They're on a mission to get her back to school. But why? I don't know. Uh, we're pretty well off here. This house is huge, and it's a ranch. You should be happy for me. Or this. As soon as you decided to keep this baby, that was it. You gave up. This is exactly why you wanted to terminate in the first place, remember? I'm just saying, you were way more awesome before the baby. Now when can I see the little guy? They really are from a university that just churns out slasher movie characters. When in doubt, nose around for no reason, in case there needs to be a bigger body count. I can't imagine why Lenore didn't confide in her bestie while she's clearly going through some shit. I understand that you're throwing your life away. Right, okay, great. You know, you're not the first woman to ever have a baby. Sure, your baby is killing people, but your friend kind of sucks. It's almost like the movie wants us to root for their deaths. Mmm, 
those characters were necessary. On the plus side, they were planning on painting the tree red anyway. Far more hip. I'll just leave the blood on the truck. Not like Frank is gonna notice anyway. Hey honey, saw someone spilled some ketchup on the truck. Did you guys have a cookout or something? If you're wondering what the explanation is for the baby being a mutant this time, yes, it's because of pills again. Good morning, I found this website online and it, uh, it had these pills. You just need to take like six tablets. Specifically, abortion pills. I made a huge mistake comparing these flashbacks to the Saw films. No, no, it's actually the Life Zone. That said... And I immediately regretted it, and I just kept thinking, please, God, don't let my baby die. Please, God, just let my baby live. Bijou Phillips is really good in it. It makes me wish this was a better-paced, better-made movie. Like how I think several hours have gone by, but Perkins is still on the same stretch of green screen road at the same time of day. Just put a Flintstones background in while you're at it. Or show us the same flashbacks we just saw. That'll eat up time. Let's take a break. Not sure if they're looking for Perkins or not, but they're bound to find him. They're on his road and probably right in front of him. They're doing something to the children. They're changing them. They don't belong to us anymore. This is not my baby. I... The unborn. Having a baby can be a scream. Welcome back. Let's see if anything will get through to Frank. He scares the hell out of me. What? He's a baby. The place is littered with animal carcasses. It killed our own pet. How are you not noticing any of this? I mean, sure, it looks a little creepy in here, but there's gotta be an explanation. She must be playing hide-and-seek with the boy. Frank is even dumber here than in the second when he tried saving the baby who then ate him. Look how he reacts to this. Why don't you trust me? I didn't remember. <sighs> you can dress like a ghost from the ring some other time. We have dinner plans. When he finally does notice something dead in the crib, he reacts to it like, Crap, more feces covered sheets I gotta clean. Great, the lights are out. Let me check to see if we paid the electric bill. I hope this doesn't have anything to do with the killer on the loose. The baby is taking control of things. It's probably for the best Frank is locked in the basement. he just get in the way. Perkins has some catching up to do. Wow, he does exist at night and off the road. Yet Frank still screws up, like being in the wrong place where Perkins now suspects Frank is the killer. Killer. He's got a great defense. He can't be the killer on the grounds of being too stupid to get away with it this long. Also, he wasn't in the delivery room during the birth massacre. And why doesn't this hospital have cameras anyway? Wait, wait, no, don't kill the other cop yet. She's got to start blindly shooting everywhere. Frank catches up fast. Five minutes ago, he didn't even know anything was wrong. And now... Daniel. Daniel. He instantly knows the baby is the one killing people. As for Perkins, yes, finally, random shooting that doesn't work, and per his will, they'll scatter his ashes on the island. This movie isn't very good at all. It's actually worse than the second, because the second is at least memorable and still had Cohen on board. This is just an incredibly by-the-numbers remake that does what it can to not show the baby, not for stylistic reasons, but because it's cheap. The others had Larry Cohen's signature knack for entertainment, absurdity, a sense of humor, and also something to say with its commentary on marriage, public relations, and new parenthood. This is a generic studio remake that could have been made by anyone. You'll get a good idea of why they didn't show much of the baby when you actually do see it. <laughs> that was so bad, I'm surprised it didn't smash cut to the end credits after that. I'm kind of glad, though, because I actually do like the ending, and it really could have worked in a better film with better effects. We're here, Lenore, consumed with regret about wanting to get rid of Daniel, yet knowing he's a monster, goes inside and direct-to-video Saint Maud's herself. I wouldn't say it earned this, but there are ideas here that could have been expanded on greatly. But hey, no sequel baiting, I suppose. They're dead. Movie's over. 
So if you're keeping score, odd-numbered It's Alive movies, good. Even-numbered It's Alive movies, not good. Now I must return to the other baby series that I've been watching. <laughs> you know, the monitor to make sure that my son is sleeping okay. Daniel's a goddamn baby, Frank.